barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander for its safety, for you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see. Oh, 
Oh 
let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. For in your great love, answer me. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and then thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more <clears throat> excuse me, did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for many? The word of the Lord.
to congratulate and to wish all of the fathers here, and fathers of all generations that we know through our family who are no longer with us, wish them a happy Father's Day. Every time this time of year comes around, uh, I always think about my own dad. And I've spent some time with you in the last few years talking a lot about my mother. One person has said she felt like my mother was her aunt. <laughs> so I appreciate that. My dad uh, is also deceased. He died in 2003 of pancreatic cancer. I'm an only child. So because of that and because my mother had predeceased him, I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with my dad in the last few years of his life. And I never really thought about him and all that he had given to our family until after he passed away. And I wish that I had had more foresight to do that. I thanked him for all that he was and is while he was alive. But I would have been a much better son, I think, if I had if I had been able to touch his heart with the love that I felt for him. He was born in 1923 and was a child during the Depression. His father died when he was only three months old. And his mother never remarried three children. World War II, and I've spoken about that, lost his thumb, the left hand in World War II. But he was the kind of person who never complained, and he always worked. He was a carpenter. And when I say a carpenter, the things that come to mind today about carpenters are not what my dad was. My dad was a perfectionist. He came from the old school. All nails were hand driven in. Everything was cut by hand. And the fit was magnificent. He worked for the last three years of his life as the head carpenter for the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. They were building what they now call the Asiatic Wing, and he was given charge of doing all the finish work in there, all the trim, all the beautiful pedestals, all of that. I remember growing up, him getting up at 4.30 every morning, rain, snow, shine, bad back, sick, whatever it was. He went to work, he worked hard, and he came home, and he was always there for five o'clock dinner. He was a man of few words, but he showed me, in retrospect, a lot of what it meant to be Christian. He was a very moral person. He was a hard worker. He was a person who was devoted to me and to my mother. I never appreciated while he was alive all the things that he had done for us. I do remember nights when I would wrap his hands in old rags after smearing Vaseline on because his hands were so raw from working outdoors. I remember a lot of those things, but I didn't appreciate them until he was gone. I was thinking the other day about fathers, and I was thinking about the gift that they are to families when they take on the responsibility of being a father and a husband. And there are many in your lives, I'm sure. Fathers on both sides of a, of a, of a couple, people that you've known, maybe even great-grandfathers. He said to me once, as long as you want, you'll have a house, a room of your own. And I think that that was his way of saying to me that his love would never stop. He had a hard time 
giving any indication of his emotions, he very rarely would use the word love, and I think that was characteristic of people of that generation. But he built the home that I was born in by himself, every nail, every board, every shingle. It took him nine months of working at night and weekends when he was finished with his own day job. He knew every nail and he knew every board in the house. To me, that was an extraordinary gift from God. To me, we all are given gifts like that. We just have to remember to be thankful and to show gratitude. He isn't with me now, but I think in his mind, by telling me that no matter what happened in my life, I would always have a room to come to, he was trying to give me a safety net. And in today's gospel, I believe that that's exactly what Jesus was doing to the 12. He knew what his fate would be. He knew where he was headed. He had chosen these men, trained them, if you will, taught them. They heard the stories, the parables. They saw the miracles, the feeding of the 5,000 and the cripples that were healed. He knew that this would not be an easy job. He knew that they would need to be courageous and that they would need to know that he was always with them. Every Father's Day, I thank my Father in prayer for always being with me, always being part of the life that I chose to live. I didn't have the gift of carpentry. I know I have other gifts. We all do. He gave me the freedom to find my own way. Jesus was sending these men forward on a job that they didn't understand what it was all about. In Matthew's final chapter, chapter 28, the Great Commissioning, it's called, it says that 11, because Judas was gone, came to him on the mountain, and he told them to go to all the corners of the earth and to baptize everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But Matthew was also wise enough to put into that passage that even though they came and even though they worshiped, they doubted. They didn't doubt Jesus. They doubted themselves. They doubted their own ability to fulfill what he was asking them to do. I will be with you. Do not be afraid. There's um, a movie that came out, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, called Sparkle. I don't know if any of you saw that with Whitney Houston. I was thinking about that when a line came up in this particular passage about uh, God knowing and watching the sparrows, how much more does he watch over us if even the smallest and most, I won't say insignificant, but the smallest of his creation, he nurtures and watches over. There's one verse in that. It says, let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. So many people have asked, and questioned about where we are in this world today with the financial problems and the unemployment and the racial up upsets and uh, with the coronavirus, all the masks 
and all the things that we have to do that we've never been asked to do before for the safety of each other. My father gave me a gift by telling me that I would always have a house, a home that I could come to no matter how bad things got. Jesus says to us, I'm always with you. We need to believe that. We need to understand his commitment to us, his fidelity, as, as historians and theologians call it, his fidelity to his creation. There will be an answer to everything. I'm not sure what they will be. I had a pastor in Massachusetts that said once that the Holy Spirit moves in very strange ways and that when there's turmoil in the world and things seem to be in upheaval beyond comprehension, that's when the Holy Spirit becomes the most powerful and the will of God is brought to fruition. If we can be people who believe that the eyes of Jesus are on each one of us, we will be fine. Our faith will sustain us. I also thought of another line in that same passage about counting the hairs on our head. And I have to smile every time I read that because every year the counting job gets easier for him <laughs> when it comes to me. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for what you bring to the service, to our worship, and welcome back. We now respond to God's word by professing our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, which proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God to fulfill the deepest desires of our hearts, we offer our prayers for ourselves and the world. That all members of the Church, the body of Christ, may live in the confident assurance of God's abiding concern and care for us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern will hear the cries of the poor and the marginalized and protect the least among us. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that all missionaries who risk their lives in service to the gospel may be emboldened through the courage and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that all fathers and those who have shown us the Father's love will be blessed with good health and receive divine assistance to be loving sources of protection, faith, and support to their children and families, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that our young church and our parish catechists 
who teach religious education and sacramental preparation may grow ever closer to God in wisdom, knowledge, and faith. We pray Lord, hear our prayer. that all who are sick or troubled in any way may surrender their burdens and anxieties to rest in God's providence where he offers refreshment of body, mind, and spirit. We pray Lord, hear our prayer. that our beloved dead may find eternal rest in heaven, especially the deceased fathers of our parish and families. We pray Lord, hear our prayer. for the intentions of our parish community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, that your great mercy toward, turn toward us, then your great love answer us according to your will. For we pray through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that a sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may we, we make offering of heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you, that, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and as our Lord and Redeemer. We always show compassion for children and for the poor for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Bless 
who love the human race and have always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of the, our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us, all, make us serve them truly after the example of Christ that is command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Jude, and, all, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Ref renewed and refreshed by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now for a blessing. Loving God, as a father gives life and nourishment to his children, so you watch over your church. Bless these men 
that they may be strengthened by, as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this as we do all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.